Welcome in everyone to the Investing in Real Estate show. I'm Clayton Morris, so glad to have you here. This is our Q&A episode where we answer your questions, your real estate or tax or whatever related questions you have. We will try to answer them here on the show. If you would like to ask us a question about investing, please head over to our website, morrisinvest.com. And right there on the right side of your screen, you'll see a little microphone icon. You can click on that and leave us like a 30 second voicemail. Uh, that would be great. While you're there, we also have our financial freedom cheat sheet, which I would encourage all of you to download. It's totally free and it could change your life. Morrisinvest.com slash freedom is the place to go. It's like three pages long, but it'll really help you figure out what your freedom number is so that you can start investing in real estate to create passive income and change your life. After all, it's all about the passive income, right? Buying investments that are producing monthly cash flow for you. These are the things they didn't teach you in school. They wanted you to work for somebody else, get a paycheck, trade your time for money. What we try to teach you here to do is to build up investments so that you can live the life that you want and have your investments work for you. Have your money working for you. So that's what we teach you here on the show. All right, let's dive into some questions today. And here's our first one. Hi, Clayton. I have one question for you. I have one property that I plan on renting out for a rental home, and I was seeing if it makes sense to get a property manager on that. I'm not close to it. I'm across the state. Um, any advice would help. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much for the question, Travis. I appreciate it. And uh, absolutely. Let me just say this. I am a huge advocate of property management companies. You know, like our company, Morris Invest, we work with great property management companies that we, you know, in our each of our towns where we build our new construction homes for our investors and our team at Sidera Wealth, they are vetting these property management companies, right? So they'll pick three or four that are have a great track record, and then we will present those to a client when they're buying one of our properties for you to pick. You know, get on the phone with them and talk to them. These are three or four that we've identified that are excellent. They've been in business for a number of years. They've got a great track record. Find the right one that fits for you, right? We'll give you suggestions. We don't own the property management companies, but we make the connections and you can, you know, uh, make that phone call. But the point is you don't want to create another business for yourself. You know, you've got one property across the state. How are you going to manage that property effectively? You can't. You're going to drive out there on a regular basis. See, the thing is, I think about scaling, right? Because it sounds like you want to add more properties to your portfolio. You don't just want one. You want to grow. Well, think of it in terms of if you had 20 properties, would you want to manage all 20 of them? So you should start at the beginning, getting a property management company and let them handle the heavy lifting. They're going to know what the rental rates are in that town. They're going to know how to get a repair person in there to fix something if it needs, if it's broken. And yes, you'll pay them a certain percentage, right? Now, what we're able to do is negotiate prices because we we have a lot of clients, so we're able to get prices down a little bit. But you should be able to talk to them, ask them what their their um, their amount that they charge per month is. It ten percent? Is it eight percent? Is it twelve percent? To me, that's absolutely worth it. That goes into my overall ROI number. Like that's a part. That's a whole factor. When I'm running my numbers, when I'm looking at my overall numbers for a property, I'm absolutely including property management as part of those numbers because I do not want to be. Uh, involved in the property management. Absolutely not. I, I, I want to create this as a business and I want to let someone else, the professionals, handle it. And then if you're saying, well, I want to save some money because the numbers aren't really good, then if I manage it myself, that, that little bit of money, I'll, I'll make it and then I kind of break even. Well, then I'll say to you, that's not a good investment then. I mean, if you're breaking even because you're managing the property or you need to manage the property in order to break even, then that ROI number does not make sense. You know, like with our properties, we want to have an internal rate of return of around 18%. Meaning that if you're using financing and you're using property management companies and you're using all of those pieces, that you're still getting a really nice return on investment. We really want to see that cash flow. Uh, so again, if you're trying to cut corners because the property is not yielding the results that you'd like, then I would say it's probably not a great investment. So th these are all things to consider. But ab to answer your question, I don't want to manage any of my own properties. In fact, Natalie and I are in the process of acquiring four properties right now that, and you know, new construction that we're, that we're working on. And they, those will be fully managed by property management. We're not going to touch them. We're not going to be involved in any of that long-term rental uh, with, that, with, with these properties. So hope that answers the question. All right, next question comes to us from Lynn, I believe. Hello, Mr. Morris. My name is Lynn. 
Um, my question is, um, well, I have a um, LLC partnership with my sister. We own one property in that LLC. We would like to close the LLC and transfer ownership of the property to our individual names. How can we do that? And what is the best way so that we're not faced with a lot of taxes? Okay. So thank you, Lynn. I appreciate that question. My question to you first would be, why would you want to do that? If you've got, is it a rental property? Um, is it, you know, if you've got tenants living in that property, of course, the reason that we set up an LLC is for liability protection, right? And even if we buy the property using our own name with financing, what we personally do is we then not too long after that want to put it into a business entity for liability protection. So that's, that's one question I have for you on that, on that point. Um, so my question would be, why would you want to do that? What is the motivation to transfer it into your own name or you're dissolving the partnership? I get that but now it's going to be in each of your own names for what purpose. Um, but to answer your question, the way that you want to do it is with a proper legal team so that this is structured properly and they can dissolve things properly. And I would recommend the team, our, our friends at, uh, at Corporate Direct. Um, we have a link on our website. If you go to our resources page at morrisinvest.com, um, I believe we even set up a program with Corporate Direct so that you can talk to them for free. And then if you work with them, they can they will give you a discount um, if you came through our website. Uh, so our friends at Corporate Direct. So just go to uh, morrisinvest.com and then look for our resources page and you should see a link there. But I would talk to the legal team there and ask them how they can properly dissolve that LLC. You want to do it correctly, of course. And then how are they going to distribute ownership to you? They're going to make sure that it's transferred properly. Uh, they They'll, they'll work on that with the title of the property and, and all of those things. But of course, you're basically selling the property to yourself. That's how this will work. Um, so you're going to need to talk to the proper legal team on that. All right, next question. And I, and I am not a lawyer. So all right, next question from Zach. Hi, my name is Zach Garner. And I did have a question for you. My wife and I came across this 14 by 57 mobile home. It's nine years old. Um, former client of mine wanted to sell it with all its contents with a 10 by 12 outbuilding. Only kicker is the current lot owner will not allow me to rent it, have to live there or move it. So I'm looking into moving it to another trailer court where the lot renter um, said I could rent it or the lot owner, I should say. And uh, just wondered this might be a good investment. 21,000 all the contents in there, which is all the appliances is in great shape. And uh, we could probably get $800 a month rent minus the $200 uh, lot cost. Uh, I think we could pay ourselves back pretty quick. Of course, it is a mobile home. Um, any advice would be great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Zach. I appreciate the question. I have never invested in mobile homes before, and I know obviously there are experts out there who invest in mobile home parks specifically because they want to own the land, of course, that are with the property, you know, that the vehicles are set, are sat upon. And what you must understand about mobile homes is they're not considered homes; they're actually considered vehicles, right? So they're they have a, you know they operate differently, and the depreciation and all of that is completely different than a standard home. So things to absolutely things to consider. Um, my suggestion would be to make sure that you get an inspection on it and run the numbers. Make sure that according to this new lot owner that you're speaking with, that yes, in fact, based on the size of it and show him the photos of it, maybe even ask him to take a look at the property that could this rent for you say 800? Is that accurate? Um, what is that based on? Really make sure that you know your numbers before you pull the trigger on purchasing something like this. Um, and make sure you're also checking in with your state guidelines on how to register this as a motor vehicle. And of course, talk with a tax accountant as well. I hope you have got a good tax advisor asking them what sort of uh, what sort of tax ramifications you would get in purchasing this and how you can claim this on your taxes properly. So those are all things that I would do. Again, I, you know, I know and certainly there's a lot of state laws now where they're absolutely not adding additional mobile home parks or there are a lot of communities are saying, no, no, no more land available for mobile home parks. So the existing mobile home parks that we have in the United States are pretty much it, uh, and they are fading quickly. Yes, there are investors who buy up as many as they can, and they've, they own multiple 
mobile home parks and they see it as a great investment, but they have it together as a well-oiled machine, right? Um, and so they really know what they're doing in this. And I, I just want to caution you to make sure every T is crossed and I is dotted here because this is new territory for you, right? You've, you've never owned a mobile home before. You may own the home you live in, which is not a mobile home, totally different. And now you're going to be moving this property to another mobile home. What is the cost associated with the actual moving of this home as well? The costs incurred. Just make sure all of the numbers make sense. Talk to a tax advisor to make sure that you're going to be able to, um, you know, structure this properly on your taxes. How will you be able to benefit from this as a, as a mobile home investor? Okay. And then also think about, well, where do you want to go from here? Think about your why, right? Do you want to just buy this one and that's it? And you're happy with that? Or do you want to start scaling and seeing if you can do more of these and think about a bigger goal, a bigger plan? I just shot a whole video on building out your how to go from beginner to expert in real estate investing. And one of the big steps that I talk about is how to map out your goals and where do you see yourself in the next few years, Zach? So I don't want you to just to focus on this one property. Is this part of a larger, larger strategy? Or is it a distraction? Maybe you want to invest in single family homes and this popped up as like a shiny object because it sounds like a good deal, right? Maybe it's a shiny object syndrome and you're, you've been really focused on something else and this is a distraction for you. Anyway, I just wanted to give you all the things that are running through my brain right now. Talk to a tax advisor. Talk to a, a lawyer who handles mobile homes in that state where you live. Okay, that's very important. Find out what the ramifications are. What about moving it? Who's going to move it? What are the costs associated with moving it? And then make sure also, of course, that new, that new landowner at that new lot can really show you other examples whether it's online or otherwise, how this would rent for $800 a month. Are they going to handle the property management as well? All things to consider. I just want to put everything out there that I would be thinking about before I made a move on this, on this property. But it's, you know, if the numbers make sense and at the end of the day, you're, you feel confident about it, then, you know, it's totally up to you to move forward, but just make sure you've crossed every T and dotted every I. Thank you for these great questions. If you would like to leave us a voicemail question, go to our website, morrisinvest.com. Click on the microphone icon there on the right side of your screen, and we will attempt to answer it here on the show. Until next time, everyone, go out there, take action, become a real estate investor. I believe it's the number one way to build wealth and protect your wealth. We'll see you next time.